Now let us resort to multiple linear regression model. There we go. If the output variable is continuous and if the input variables that you have are multiple and if all the input variables are continuous then you simply proceed with multiple linear regression. But if the output variable is continuous and if you have multiple input variables which are discrete in nature, those discrete inputs should be converted to dummy variables and then you can proceed with your multiple linear regression. What does that mean? Take a different scenario here. Say you have an input variable called make of car and it has four levels within that. Petrol, diesel, CNG and LPG. If you have four levels, you need to create four different variables. You need to create four different variables. And if you look at the first one, since it's petrol, you place a one for petrol. For the rest of the values, you give a zero. The second entry is diesel. So you'll have one for diesel and for the rest of the places, you'll have zero. For CNG, you're going to have one for CNG and for the rest of the values, it would be zero. And LPG, you'll have one for LPG and for the rest of the values, you have zero. So on and so forth. This is how you create dummy variable and here is the data set based on which we are going to build multiple linear regression cars.csv you have these different variables in which you are expected to predict miles per gallon we are expected to predict miles per gallon and you have four inputs x1 x2 x3 and x since all of these are in different units probably you want to make them unitless by standardizing the data and then build a prediction model on the standardized data. Maybe you'll get a better, maybe you'll get better results. But let us not standardize the data. Let us try to build prediction model using this data as is. And then later on we will, you know, try to build on top of that. Even before we build the model, even before we start with the multiple linear regression, let us understand the model assumption. For a simple linear regression, the equation is y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x. Since we have only a single input, if you have multiple inputs in this way, you need to write an equation in this way, which has multiple variables. Yeah, you just need to expand it. That's it. However, when we build the model, we also need to evaluate the model assumptions. This holds true for your simple linear regression also. But slowly we are trying to build. Yeah. First assumption is that your relationship between y and x should always be linear. This is one part. Another point that you need to bear in mind is they should be linear in parameters. For example, you can also build an equation like this. y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 square. You can have this kind of an equation also. That's acceptable. However, the relationship between y and x square will not be linear. The relationship between y and the parameters, which is beta naught, beta 1, beta 2, etc., that should be linear. Not just the relationship between y and x, but your Parameters should end or enter this equation linearly. That's one assumption. Another assumption is about error. How do you get error? Errors is equal to predicted value minus actual value. We've already discussed and we have seen that also. So the first assumption of errors is that errors should be independently and identically distributed, that is errors should be normally distributed. Errors should be independent of each other. And identically distributed means errors should have constant variance and errors should have zero mean. As I've already shown you in this prediction equation that you'll have multiple errors or uh, explanation, quick explanation. Yeah, so you have this prediction equation which is adipose tissue is equal to using these values minus 215.9815 plus 3.4589 multiplied by waste. Now, if you substitute this first entry waste circumference in this, 
you get a predicted value because it's prediction equation that predicted value happens to be 42.56 and in reality the adipose tissue value was 25.72 if you take the second entry and if you substitute this waist circumference in the equation you get another predicted value and that predicted value is 35 point so the second predicted value here is 35.13 so on and so forth in reality your adipose tissue value is 25.89 now if you subtract predicted value minus actual value you'll get an error this is called as e1 error you'll get some value for uh, a uh, 61 and if you subtract these two you'll get another error value this is error 2 in this way you'll have errors for all 109 entries you can of course of course calculate the average and variance for those errors yeah and errors should have zero mean average should be zero and it should have constant variance variance should not be too much so if you just plot it think about the ICC cricket ball example you have the circumference of cricket ball as 229 to 224 mm and you were plotting each individual data point in that way in that way if you plot each error value the variance should be constant I mean it should not decrease or increase you should not see any pattern as such meaning your errors should not be in this way or should not be in this way or there should not be any cyclic pattern etc that is what it means and if the errors are constant it is called as homoscedasticity and if errors are not constant that is a problem for us it is called as heteroscedasticity you need to check for this if you do not have constant variance if you have heteroscedasticity it is going to throw error your model will be distorted your model will give wrong results hence we need to evaluate this model assumption also alongside all of your errors should be independent of each other so if you get an error e1 by subtracting the first predicted value minus this actual value this error should not have any dependency with the second error which is this predicted value minus this actual value there should not be any dependency between various errors if there is a dependency then something is going wrong your data collection is wrong maybe so if they are not independent there is another problem that we need to deal with which is called as autocorrelation problem we will evaluate even this once we build the prediction model we're going to evaluate this also the next thing is we need to look at the assumptions pertaining to predictors what are your predictors your predictors are also called as input variables so the inputs that you choose for your prediction purpose say you're trying to predict profits of your organization when you try to predict this you need to sit down with your subject matter experts with your domain experts and check with them on which inputs will help you predict profits accurately so you should not randomly say that hey these are all the inputs that I have so let me choose those no your inputs which you select should never be random you should put a lot of thorough analysis and then come up with your predictors the second the values which you measure for each and every input should be accurate it should be measured without any error you might also want to explore a concept called as measurement system analysis which is basically majorly used in Six Sigma uh, projects but that helps you determine on whether the data that you have collected has errors or not whether the measurement system can be reliable or not right for this you have two techniques if you're dealing with attribute data then there is concept called as attribute agreement analysis and if you're dealing with continuous data you go with a technique called as gauge R&R &R, repeatability and reproducibility I'll try to include a video recordings of these sessions also so that you get a sense on what this is all about and very important our predictors should be linearly independent of each other if there is a dependency between different input variables 
that means there would be a collinearity problem that's called as collinearity problem so there is some kind of interaction going on between these two input values and finally we have an assumption pertaining to observations each observation is a record for example each row is an observation and each observation should be equally reliable you cannot say that the first 10 entries are accurate the rest of the entries are entered based on some high level assumption you cannot say that each and every record each and every observation should be equally reliable so we have to build a model and evaluate a model for these assumptions only then your multiple linear regression would be complete.